OMP Phoenix fletching jig. Only waited over a year for this one. Hello, welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm FJJ here with PodiumArcher.com looking at the Phoenix fletching jig. This was supposed to come out last year, I think at the ATA show originally. And we've had these on order like hundreds of them for over a year. And I got a surprise box a couple of days ago. This actually showed up. So we are super excited about it. It looks like a more improved Bitsenberger from what all the pictures showed and all the images showed. So let's bolt it together and see what it looks like. Okay, so this does have a big giant base on it. It comes all like you have to bolt it together, right? So those screws, those screws, etc. rubber base. I, I like that they made this big like this. I know that sometimes it's like, God, it's gonna take up so much room and what have you. But when you go to push down on it and load things in it, it doesn't move around and that's pretty cool. You adjust your angle right here. So you loosen this knob. We've already got this set right for a given arrow, but we're on the two mark, which I'm assuming these are degrees of angle. You loosen this guy right here and move it over and there's an indent at three, indent at four, indent at five, etc. There's a line here and a line here. It shows you that all the way right, all the way left, which is pretty cool. Uh, we were on two. So what I will say about this is I don't think it's quite as adjustable as a Bitsenberger. It does a really good job. Gets really square. Does have the 90 degree, 120 degree options. And so you can actually, N75, 105, just like a Bitsenberger. So you can get a four fletch, a three fletch, and the X-wing option. So, and it's got a nice little base to put your arrow on. Indexer in here. It's not perfectly tight in here, it's real close. It's definitely tighter than a stock Bitsenberger. You have your lines on here for putting your fletch on. Let's say we wanna start there, and then you back the butt of that up against that and the magnet, and slide her down just like so. These two screws here adjust your in and out position, and there are lines over here once again. I should be able to tip that up so you can see it that show you how far you're setting it and where you're moving it at, tightening and loosening, bring it in, bring it out. The one thing we did try on this already is we put a big arrow and a small arrow in there, like 23 size, 27 size, and they still line up exactly the same. Where on a bits, it won't quite line up right. So a guy might actually be able to set his angle and, cha and change out different diameter of arrows and still be able to use it without changing it. But without further ado, let's fletch it. All right, so this is already set for us. And some primer here. And we're going to use that two line. Just do a little makes life easy. I'm going to use this bottle in a while, so we'll see what we get here. And then I like to kind of take the tip, move it around a little bit, make sure you got a little glue on everything. Slide it back, push it down just like a bits. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's see if that's enough. So apparently they put this on uh, <laughs> four fletch. They probably did that on purpose just to mess with me. So apparently I'm making a four fletch arrow, folks. The guys in the shop love to mess with me. I let them play with this yesterday so they could take a look at it. Traditionally, once you primer something, uh, just about any super glue will work, so you don't have to necessarily use a particular brand's glue. I can feel that receiver move just a little bit. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The magnet on this thing feels way stronger than a bit's. Like, I might not have to hold that down. Um, whereas the bits, you've always got to push down on it. You might be able to push down on it and let go of it. So I'm going to try on this next one and see if it actually just sits there. Or if we get a different glue bond here. Like that. 
So yeah, you, you can feel it kind of move a little, but it's not as much as a bits typically does. Now they make an adapter for a bits that tightens that up pretty good, so I'm not going to hold it. I'm just going to leave it. Yeah, it's, it's definitely got a, a greater magnet surface. The magnet plate is way bigger. Oh, and I want to say these are like 120 bucks or something like that, 115. And if you buy a bits and change the receiver out, you're going to spend more than that. Bits is right around 100, if I remember right. So I would say this for what it is and the tolerance that you're getting, I really think this is probably a better way to go. Um, that being said, you can manipulate a little bit more with a bits and burger than you can with this. Like when we were playing with trying to get the fletching angle right, there was like one spot you could set this at and you couldn't go more than two degree with this clamp with this size of vein. So a bits you can usually manipulate between like two and three, maybe three and a half degrees with something like this. So if you want something a little more adjustable, a bits might work, but man, if you're not super particular on putting an exact extra amount of manipulation. This, this fletching jig is definitely easier to use. It's more solid. You don't have to sit there and hold it because it's holding itself down. When I push that down, it doesn't come back up. Like a bits, you go to push on it. If you let go of it, you can see it rise back up. And it's not keeping pressure on the vein to where it doesn't dry quickly, which with super glues, that really matters. If you use uh, like Platinum, Saunders NPV, Flex Bond, any of those kind of glues that take a while to dry, you don't really have to push on it. You can just leave it there. It's because it's not pressure activated. Super glues are pressure activated, so you really have to be able to push on to do it. So let's pull this off. And that's your right helical forefletch and the amount of twist. So it's not quite as much as like um, a true helical by any means, but that's a pretty good amount of helical. Uh, if you're not wanting crazy, crazy large amounts of helical, I would say this is more than adequate. And you could get more helical on a shorter vein with this jig without too much of a problem. It just doesn't have quite as much flexibility because this is flat and it doesn't curve. Uh, but it's really well done. I might even go as far as to say that it's kind of been worth the wait. This is a really nice tool and it's, it's stout. It looks like you can mount it to a counter if you want, if you don't want to leave it free floating. But... I, I got to give it to them. OMP makes really, really good stuff, which they're a division of Kinsey's, if I remember right. Um, but they really make good product. I can't say enough positive about it. And this, this fletching jig's really good. And for what they're charging, it's really reasonable. So maybe head on over to PodiumArcher.com and pick one of these up. We did just get some. A little coupon code MFJJ to save you a little bit of money. Let me know what else you want me to look at and review and test. As much as we try to find as many things as we can, there's always stuff that we miss or overlook, so make sure to comment down below if we're forgetting something. And if I said something dumb or didn't know what I was talking about on here, feel free to argue about it down below. Thanks for watching.